American Smooth by Rita Dove. We were dancing. It must have been a foxtrot or a waltz, something romantic but requiring restraint. Rise and fall, precise execution as we moved into the next song without stopping. Two chests heaving above a seven week stride. Such perfect agony one learns to smile through. Ecstatic mimicry being the sine qua non of American Smooth. And because I was distracted by the effort of keeping my frame, the leftward lean, head turned just enough to gaze out past your ear and always smiling, smiling. I didn't notice how still you become until we had done it. For two measures? Four? Achieve flight, that swift and serene magnificence, before the earth remembered who we were and brought us down. A Graveyard by Marianne Moore. Man, looking into the sea, taking the view from those who have as much right to it as you have it to yourself. It is human nature to stand in the middle of a thing, but you cannot stand in the middle of this. The sea has nothing to give but a well-excavated grave. The firs stand in a procession, each with an emerald turkey foot at the top, reserved as the contours, saying nothing. Repression, however, is not the most obvious characteristic of the sea. The sea is a collector, quick to return a rapacious look. There are others besides you who have worn that look, whose expression is no longer a protest. The fish no longer investigate them, for their bones have not lasted. Men lower nets, unconscious of the fact that they are desecrating a grave, and row quickly away, the blades of the oars moving together, like the feet of water spiders, as if there were no such thing as death. The wrinkles progress upon themselves in a phalanx, beautiful, under networks of foam, and fade breathlessly while the sea wrestles in and out of the seaweed. The birds swim through the air at top speed, emitting catcalls as heretofore. The tortoiseshell scorches about the feet of the cliffs, and motion beneath them and the ocean, under the pulsation of lighthouses and noise of bell buoys, advances as usual, looking as if it were not that ocean in which drop things are bound to sink, in which if they turn and twist, it is neither with volition nor consciousness. The Strength of Fields by James L. Dickey a separation from the world, a penetration to some source of power, and a life-enhancing return. Banganeth writes their passage. Moth force a small town always has, given the night, what field forms can be, outlining the small, civic, light decisions over a man walking near home. Men are not where he is exactly now, but they are around him, around him like the strength of fields. The solar system floats on, above him in town lots. Tell me, train sound, with all your long lost grief, what I can give. Dear Lord of all the fields, what am I going to do? Streetlights, blue force and frail as the homes of men. Tell me how to do it, how to withdraw, how to penetrate and find the source of the power you always had. Light as a moth, rising with the level and moonlit expansion of the fields around the sleep of hoping men. You, I, what difference is there? We can all be saved by a secret blooming. Now as I walk the night, and as you walk with me, we know simplicity is close to the source that sleeping men search for in their home deep beds. We know that the sun is away. We know that the sun can be conquered by moths in blue hometown air. The star splinter pointed in wild. The dead lie under the pastures. They look on and help. Tell me, freight train, when there is no one else to hear. Tell me in a voice the sea would have if it had not a better one, as it lifts hundreds of miles away. It's fumbling, deep structured war like the profound, unstoppable craving of nations for the witch. Hunger, time, and the moon. The moon lying on the brain is on the excited sea on the strength of fields. Lord, let me shake with purpose. Wild hope can always spring from tended strength. Everything is in that, that and nothing but kindness. More kindness, dear Lord of the Renewing Green. That is where it all has to start, with the simplest things. More kindness will do nothing less than save every sleeping one and night-walking one 
of us. My life belongs to the world. I will do what I can. The Arrow in the Song by Henry Wadsworth Longwell. I shot an arrow into the air, it fell to earth, I knew not where. For so swiftly it flew, the sight could not follow it in its flight. I breathed the song into the air, it fell to earth, I knew not where. For who has sight so keen and strong that it can follow the flight of song? Long, long afterward, in an oak, I found the arrow still and broke, and the song from beginning to end I found again in the heart of a friend. Whenever you see a tree by Padma Van Kaplanen, think how many long years this tree waited as a seed for an animal or bird or wind or rain to maybe carry it to maybe the right spot. Or again, it waited months for seasons to change until time and temperature were fine enough to coax it, to swell and burst its hard shell so it could send slender roots to clutch at greener soils and let tender shoots reach toward the sun. Think how many decades or, de decades or centuries it thickened and climbed and grew taller and deeper, never knowing if it would find enough water or light, or when conditions would be right, so it could keep on adding leaves, spreading leaves, adding blossoms, and dancing. Next time you see a tree, think how much hope it holds. A Song in the Front Yard by Gwendolyn Brooks. I've stayed in the front yard all my life. I want to peek at the back, where it's rough and untended, and hungry weed grows. A girl gets sick of a rose. I want to go in the backyard now, and maybe down the alley, to where the charity children play. I want a good time today. They do some wonderful things. They have some wonderful fun. My mother sneers, but I say it's fine, how they don't have to go in at quarter to nine. My mother, she tells me, that Johnny May will grow up to be a bad woman. That George will be taken to jail sooner or late. On account of last winter, he sold our back gate. But I say it's fine. Honest, I do. And I'd like to be a bad woman too. And wear the brave stockings of night black lace. And strut down the streets with paint on my face. Nothing to Do by James E. Frank Twitter. The fields are white, the laborers are few. Yet say the idle, there's nothing to do. Jails are crowded, and Sunday schools few. We still complain, there's nothing to do. Drunkards are dying, yes sons, it is true. With mother's arms folded, with nothing to do. The heathens are dry, dying, their blood falls on you. How can you people find nothing to do? Rosetti. Does the road wind uphill all the way? Yes, to the very end. Will the day's journey take the whole long day? From morn to night, my friend. But is there for the night a resting place? A roof for when the slow dark hours begin. May not the darkness hide it from my face? You cannot miss that in. Shall I meet other wayfarers at night? Those who have gone before, then must I knock or call when just in sight? They will not keep you standing at that door. Shall I find comfort, travel sore and weak? Of labor you shall find the sum. Will there be beds for me and all who seek? Yeah, beds for all who come. We are other tribe by Alberta Rios. We plant seeds in the ground and dreams in the sky, hoping that someday the roots of one will meet the upstretched limbs of another. It has not happened yet. We share the sky, all of us, the whole world. Together we are a tribe of eyes that look upward, even as we stand on uncertain ground. The earth beneath us moves, quiet and wild, its boundaries shifting, its muscles wavering. The sky is our common home, the place we all live. There we are in the world together. The dream of sky requires no passport. Blue will not be fenced. Blue will not be a crime. Look up. Stay a while. Let your breathing slow. Know that you will always have a home here.
you, Andrew Marvel, by our Archibald McLeish. And here, face down beneath the sun, and here, upon Earth's noon height, to feel the always coming on, the always rising of the night, to feel, creep up the curving east, the earthy chill of dusk and slow, upon those underlands, the vast and ever climbing shadow grow. And strange to echo upon the trees, take leaf by leaf the evening strange, the flooding dark about their knees, the mountains over Persia change. And now our command shall be gate, dark, empty, and withered grass. And through the twilight, now the late, few travelers in the westward pass. And Baghdad darkened, and the bridge across the silent river gone, and through Arabia the edge of evening widened and steal on. And deep in on Palmer's street, the wheel rut and the ruined stone. And Lebanon fade out and creep high through clouds and overblown. And over Sicily the air, still flashing with the landward goals, and loom and slowly disappear, the sails above the shadowy holes. And Spain go under and the shore of Africa the gilded sand, and evening vanish and no more, the low pale light across that land, nor now the long light on the sea. And here, face downward in the sun, to feel how swift, how secretly the shadow of the night comes on. Today, by Billy Collins. If ever there were a spring day so perfect, so uplifted by a warm, intuitive breeze, that it made you want to throw open all the windows in the house and unlatch the door to the canary's cage, indeed, rip the little door from its jam. A day when the cool brick paths and the garden bursting with peonies seemed so etched in sunlight that you felt like taking a hammer to the glass paperweight on the living room end table, releasing the inhabitants from their snow-covered cottage so they could walk out, holding hands and squinting, into this larger dome of blue and white. Well, today is just that kind of day. Keeping Things Whole by Mark Strand In a field, I, in the absence of field, this is always the case. Wherever I am, I am what is missing. When I walk, I part the air, and always the air moves in to fill the spaces where my body's been. We all have reasons for moving. I move to keep things whole. Ways of Talking by Hodgen. We used to like talking about grief. Our journals and letters were filled with losses, complaints, and sorrows. Even if there was no grief, we wouldn't stop lamenting, as though longing for the charm of a distressed face. Then, we couldn't help expressing grief. So many, so many things descended without warning. Labor wasted, loves lost, houses gone, marriages broken, Friends estranged, ambitions worn away by immediate needs. Words lined up in our throats for a good whining. Grief seemed like an endless river, the only immortal flow of life. After losing a land and then giving up a tongue, we stopped talking of grief. Smiles began to brighten our faces. We laugh a lot at our own mess. Thanks. Things become beautiful, even hailstones in the strawberry fields. Anecdote of the Jar by Wall Stevens. I placed the jar in Tennessee, and round it was upon a hill. It made the slovenly wilderness surround that hill. The wilderness rose up to it and sprawled around, no longer wild. The jar was round upon the ground and tall and of a port in air. It took dominion everywhere. The jar was gray and bare. It did not give a bird or bush like nothing else in Tennessee. Question by Mae Swinton. Body my house, my horse, my hound. What will I do when you are fallen? Where will I sleep? How will I ride? What will I hunt? Where can I go without my mount? All eager and quick, how will I know and think it ahead when body, my good bright dog, is dead? How will it be to lie in the sky without roof or door and wind for an eye? 
With cloud for shift, how will I hide? It Couldn't Be Done by Edgar Albert Guest. Somebody said that it couldn't be done, but he with a chuckle replied that maybe it couldn't, but he would be one who wouldn't say so until he tried. So he buckled right in with a trace of a grin on his face. And if he worried, he hit it. He started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. Somebody scoffed. Oh, you'll never do that. At least no one has ever done it. But he took off his coat and he took off his hat. And the first thing we knew, he'd begun it. He, with a lift of his chin and a bit of a grin, without any doubting or quit it, he started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. There are thousands to tell you that it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophesy failure. There are thousands to point out to you one by one the dangers that wait to assail you. But just buckle in with a bit of a grin. Just take off your coat and go to it. Just start to sting as you tackle the thing that cannot be done, and you'll do it. After the Winter by Claude McKay. Someday, when the trees have shed their leaves and against the morning's white, the shivering birds beneath the eaves have sheltered for the night. We'll turn our faces southward love toward the summer isle, where, broom, where bamboos fire the shafted road and wide mouth organs smile. We will seek the quiet hill where towers the cotton tree and leaps the laughing crystal rill and works the joining bee. And we will build a cottage there beside an open glade with black ribbed bluebells glowing near and ferns that never fade. Disenchantment Bay by Timothy Murphy. Touch and go, our Cessna bumped the sand, thumped its tender tires, lifted off as if on wires. Bank of ice and rocket swings to land. We pitched our camp hard by Hubbard Stace, some 60 fathoms tall, a seven mile long wall, seven leagues from Yakuta, our base. Crack, a blue syrup tottered and gave. Stunned at the water's edge, we fled our vantage ledge, like oyster catchers skittering from a wave. Separation has become my fear. What was does not console. What is is past control. The disembodiment that looms so near. Detachment, so a nice clip by the sea, cowls with a seismic crash of bergy bits and brash, choking a waterway with its debris. We cleared the neap tide beach of glacial rack, pace and mark the ground, then wave the Cessna around. I love we bank on you to bear us back. Ode to Langston by Don Quigley. Langston, we too sing Turtle Island. We are the 574 nations. They want to hide us in the past tense, yet we love and dream and are still here. Today now, we are at the Oval Table. Our women live as our, nobody can ever say to us, natives lived, natives ate, drank, led. We are the present tense because they will know what we've always known, and be humble. We too sing Turtle Island. Corn Maze by David Barber. Here is where you can get nowhere. Faster than ever, as you go under, deeper and deeper in the fertile smother of another acre. Like any other, you can't peer over. And then another, and everywhere, you veer or hair. There you are farther and farther afield than before. But on you blunder in the very demeanor, as if the answer to looking for cover were to bewilder your inner minotaur. And near and far, neither here nor there, and where you are, it's where you are. A Birthday by Christina Rossetti. My heart is like a singing bird whose nest is in a watered shoe. My heart is like an apple tree whose boughs are bent with thick set fruit. My heart is like a rainbow shell that paddles in a halcyon sea. My heart is gladder than all these because my love has come to me. Raise me a dais of silken down, hang it with vair and purple dyes, carpet in doves and pomegranates, and peacocks with a hundred eyes. Work it in gold and silver grapes, in leaves and silver fleur de lis. Because the birthday of my life has come, my love has come to me.
Let Evening Come by Jane Kenyon. Let the light of late afternoon shine through chinks in the barn, moving up the bales as the sun moves down. Let the cricket take up chafing as a woman takes up her needles and her yarn. Let evening come. Let dew collect on the hoe abandoned and long grass. Let the stars appear and the moon disclose her silver horn. Let the fox go back to its sandy den. Let the wind die down. Let the shed go black inside. Let evening come. To the bottle in the ditch. To the scoop in the oats. To air in the lung. Let evening come. Let it come as it will. And don't be afraid. God does not leave us comfortless. So let evening come.